Hey guys, my name is Pixie, and this is the Cherry Picker app that lets you create a scratch card mini game. We're going to simulate scratching off an image using a simple animation. The scratch card background looks like this. There are nine circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each circle is placed inside of an 80 by 80 square. That means that this image is exactly 240 pixels wide by 240 pixels tall. I've also created 10 different fruit icons and named them icon1.png through icon10.png. It's important to note that the cherry is icon1. I also have four scratch images. When the game starts, you'll see nine silver circles. If the user selects a circle, the scratch image will animate to make it look like you're scratching off the circle. In the scratch card, we're going to say that the cherry is the winning icon. It's important to note that icon1.png is the cherry. The user gets to scratch off three circles. If the user finds one cherry, they get 10 points. If the user finds two cherries, they get 25 points. And if the user finds three cherries, they get 100 points. Head over to Appy Builder and let's start working on the free design. Design the screen however you'd like, it really doesn't matter. You can see that I've set the alignments to center center and I'm using the standard background image that I use for a lot of tutorials. Start by adding a canvas to the screen. This canvas should match the exact size of the scratch card background, which in this case is 240 pixels in height and 240 pixels in width. We won't need a background color for this canvas, but we will need the background scratch card image. Next, add nine image sprites to the canvas. You may think that the image sprites need to be lined up in the center of each circle, but that isn't true. The image sprites need to be lined up in the top left of each circle because each icon is also 80 by 80 pixels. Image sprite one is the most obvious. Set the X and Y position of image sprite one to zero, zero. So that means that image sprite two needs to be located 80 pixels to the right of image sprite one. That would place image sprite two at X equals 80, Y equals zero. Image sprite three needs to be located 80 pixels to the right of image sprite two. That would place image sprite three at X equals 160, Y equals zero. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and use the coordinates that you see on this screen to match up the remaining sprites. When you're finished, each of the little ghosts should be lined up in the top left corner of their respective circle. You can now unpause the video if you're ready to continue. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with nine more image sprites. Go ahead and add nine more image sprites to the canvas. Again, you're probably going to need to pause the video a couple of times throughout this part. I'm going to show you a portion of it. You're going to pause the video and complete the rest of it. Then unpause and keep watching. You should now have 18 image sprites total. Click on image sprite 10 and rename it to scratch one. Then click on image sprite 11 and rename it to scratch two. Keep doing this until you have renamed the remaining image sprites. When you're finished, you should have image sprite one through image sprite nine and scratch one through scratch nine. Each of the scratch images needs to line up perfectly inside of a circle. The scratch images need to be on top of the image sprites. So scratch one is going to go on top of image sprite one. Scratch two is going to go on top of image sprite two. Scratch three will go on top of image sprite three and so on. Click on scratch one and set the Z index to two. Setting the Z index to two means that this sprite will be placed on top of image sprite one because image sprite one has a lower Z index. Set the picture to scratch1.png. Then set the X and Y coordinate to zero, zero. And you can see that the little silver circle is now centered within the pink circle. Then click on scratch two. Set the picture to scratch1.png, which is the little silver circle. Set X to 80 and set Y to zero. Then set the Z index to two. Click on scratch three. Set the picture to scratch1.png. Set X to 160 and Y to zero. Then set the Z index to two. Pause the video here and go through and check to make sure you have the correct picture, the correct coordinates, and the correct Z index for all 18 sprites. Unpause the video when you're ready to continue. Let's add a reset button and three labels. These are just for testing purposes, so they don't have to look pretty. You definitely want to rename them just so we can identify them in the blocks editor. I'll call this button reset. The first label will be called test random. The second will be test user select, and the third will be called test game over. Lastly, we need one clock component. Call this animate scratch. This will animate the silver circle so it looks like it's being scratched off the card. 
Uncheck Timer Always Fires and Uncheck Timer Enabled and set the interval to 200. You can play around with this interval if you want the animation to be faster or slower. We're finished with the free design, let's move on to the blocks editor. In the blocks editor we need eight global variables. Call these max scratches, scratch counter, n, index, sprite icon list, sprite scratch list, scratch card list, and randomly generated list. The first variable is the number of chances the user will have. We'll say that the user can scratch off three circles. The scratch counter will keep track of the number of circles the user has scratched off, so this should be set to zero by default. The variable n will help us animate the scratch images during each clock tick, so this should be set to one by default. The index variable will be set to zero by default and will help us pass the index value from a procedure into the clock. The last four variables, as you can tell by the name, are all lists, so we want to set these to empty lists by default. Let's start with the initialize list procedure. You'll probably need to pause the video to work on this part, but it's something we do in almost every tutorial, so most of you should be familiar with this procedure. We have 18 image sprites total on the canvas, and we split them up into two parts. We'll need to populate the sprite icon list with image sprite 1 through image sprite 9. The sprite scratch list is going to contain scratch 1 through scratch 9. When you're finished, you should have all 18 of the image sprites that we used on the canvas split up into two different lists. The next procedure is called generate icons. This procedure will loop through the sprite icon list and set a random picture for that sprite using one of the 10 fruit icons. During each loop, we need to get a random number from one to 10. Expand the any component section and grab a block for any image sprite. We need a set picture block for this image sprite. The component will be the current item in the loop and the picture is gonna be based on the random number that we selected. The food icons start with the word icon, followed by a number, and end in .png. Then we'll add the random number that was chosen to the randomly generated list. This might sound confusing right now, but you will see it in action when we test the app. Create a procedure called enable scratch card with one argument named boolean. This procedure will allow us to quickly enable or disable every single scratch sprite based on a boolean value of true or false. This is going to be a handy way to let us quickly disable the entire scratch card just in case the user tries to scratch off more than they're allowed to. Our main procedure is called scratch off with one argument named index. The first thing we need to do in this procedure is make a call to enable scratch card and we'll set the boolean value to false. We do this so that the user cannot scratch another circle during the clock animation. If scratch counter is less than or equal to max scratches, then we need to increment scratch counter by one. This is how we're able to keep track of the number of scratches the user has made. We also need to set global index to the value of index that we passed into this procedure. We then populate scratch card list with global index, and we finish this procedure by turning on the animate scratch clock. You might want to see what this is actually doing, so let's update the test user select label with the value of scratch card list. We need one procedure to end the game. In this procedure, we need to make sure that the animate scratch clock is disabled. We also want to disable the entire scratch card. We need two local variables called cherries and points earned. Set both default values to zero. Now we're going to loop through the scratch card list and check for cherries. The scratch card list is a list of the circles the user scratched off during the game. During each loop, we check for the matching index in the randomly generated list. If the item in the randomly generated list for that index is a one, that means the user picked a cherry. So we increment the cherries variable by one. We also need to create our point system. If the user picks one cherry, they earn 10 points. Otherwise, if the user picks two cherries, they earn 25 points. And if the user picks three cherries, they earn 100 points. For testing purposes, let's output the number of points earned to the test game over label. It's important to note that these points are not saved. That's not how data works, but we have covered using storage and database in previous tutorials. So you wanna take the knowledge you learn from this tutorial and apply it to the database that you're currently working on. All right, scroll back up to the top and let's add some events. When the screen starts, make a call to initialize lists and generate icons. 
we can also update test random with the randomly generated list. This will let us see which icons have been chosen. The button.reset click event will allow us to reset the scratch card so we can keep testing it and make sure that it works. First, we need to loop through the sprite scratch list and set each picture back to scratch1.png and set the visibility of each sprite back to true. At the end of each game, three of the scratch sprites will be invisible and their picture will change and we have no way of knowing what those will be. So we use this loop to set them all back to their defaults. We also want to make sure that the scratch card is enabled, so the Boolean value should be set to true. We also need to reset some of our global variables. Scratch counter should be reset back to zero, n should be reset back to one, index should be reset back to zero, and the last two lists need to be reset to empty lists. It's not necessary to reset all of our global variables, just these in particular. We can then take these variables and put them in our button reset.click event. Make a call to generate icons so we get a whole new list of icons on the scratch card, and let's update our test labels. Test random should now show the new randomly generated list, and the other two labels can be set to blank values. The animate scratch timer is a little complicated. Each time the clock ticks, we increment n by 1. The variable n will help us keep track of clock ticks. If n is greater than 4, then we need to turn this clock off. We also need to set the visibility of the scratch sprite to false, meaning it will be invisible. To do that, we use the anyImageSprite.Visible block where the component matches the global index in the sprite scratch list. Global n needs to be reset back to 1, and we need to enable the entire scratch card board. During this condition, we also need to check to see if scratch counter is greater than or equal to max scratches. If so, we need to end the game. We also need a condition when n is less than or equal to 4. In this condition, we set the picture of the current scratch sprite based on the value of n. The scratch image start with the word scratch, followed by a number, and end in .png. You might remember this from the animation tutorial. When n equals 1, we see scratch1.png. When n equals 2, we see scratch2.png, etc. Since there is an icon behind each scratch image, we'll see this animation slowly reveal the icon behind it. We're almost done, we just need to make all of this work. Click on scratch1 and grab a .flung event. Keep in mind that there currently is no built-in event or procedure that masks an image on a canvas, which is why we're simulating scratching off the image. The user is going to instinctively make a scratching motion on the silver circle, which really is just a flinging motion. They only need to fling the circle one time for it to work. When that happens, we make a call to the scratch off procedure and pass the index that matches the current scratch sprite. In this case, the index should be one. Copy and paste this event below. Use the drop down menu to change the event to scratch two and set the index to two. Copy and paste this event. Use the drop down menu to change the event to scratch three and set the index to three. Continue this pattern until you have made an event for all nine of the scratch sprites. When you're done, we can test the app and see what it looks like. This is the design for the Pixie Bomb Squad, so if you're using the free design, your screen will look a little bit different. Take a look at the test random label. It shows a list of numbers that were randomly generated based on the icons from the media folder. Remember that this label is showing the values from the randomly generated list. If we count in order of appearance from left to right, we see 2, 2, 10, 2, 10, 6, 1, 10, 5. Remember that the number one represents the cherry. That means if I scratch off this circle, it should be a cherry, and it is. The number seven has been added to the test user select label. Remember that this label shows the data from the scratch card list. This number seven represents scratch seven. Just by looking at these numbers, I can tell that no matter what, I'll only be able to get 10 points from this scratch card. So I'm gonna randomly scratch off this circle. The number eight represents that this is scratch eight. And if I look at index eight in the randomly generated list, I see the number 10, which represents icon10.png. I'm gonna scratch off the circle in the bottom right, which is scratch nine, and I get a lemon. The game ends and you can see that I've earned 10 points because I only found one cherry. Now I can use the reset button and try again and keep testing the app. You can see from this list that this card is a dud. There isn't a single cherry on this card, so no matter what I scratch off, I won't be able to win. All right, let's wrap this up. 
Your challenge for this video is to incorporate what you've learned here into your database, if you've been working with the database, that is. Keep in mind that your users should not be able to see the test labels, so you can hide them in the final design or just delete them. Think about how you want to implement the scratch card. Maybe users only get one scratch per day, so you might want to think about turning the reset button into a go back button. Definitely use this challenge as an opportunity to improve your blocks and make everything fit nicely together. Visit my Patreon page where you can find out more about being part of the Pixie Bomb Squad. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can get help on projects you're currently working on and find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!